Blah. Blah? <laughs> what was I trying to say? <laughs> it's been a long day. Don't take up so much space. Hello friends, my name is Miro and welcome to my channel. Today we have a bit of coffee, a bit of Calathea, a bit of spider mites. I know it's not a Calathea anymore, it's Goepartia, Goepertia. We have that, whatever that is. And it has a bit of spider mites. I think actually they have just gone by now because I've, I've ignored them for a bit. They're probably not gone. Today I wanted to record a video for you that is going to be a bit more relaxed. I'm gonna take it down a notch. I will not be so intense. <laughs> That's a lie. But I had an idea that maybe once a month, maybe every last week of the month, we could do a video about plant care, plant chat, plant chores, whatever you need to do really that relates to plants. Anyways, this has been a month, exciting month, and I think it's time for us to just relax with our plants. I have here this Goepertia medallion. <clears throat> it's a Roseopicta medallion, whatever, something like that. And it has a bit of spider mites. Now it's, it's doing still quite okay, but I think it's, um, I can no longer ignore them. So I think, and it's also a bit dusty, you know, so I think it's time to give it a bit of a cleanup. So I'm just gonna take a sip of coffee. I have some water. This is by the way why I have the fuzz yellow thing. You wipe your, what's, what is it? You, what is it called? A towel, oh my God. Sometimes my brain is just like <clears throat> That's why I have this old towel so I could do a bit of washi washi because I usually do this in the bathtub and I don't think you want to go to the bathtub with me. Very few people do. <laughs> so I have some plain water here in this bucket. I have a sponge and I have dishwashing liquid. So I'm gonna put a bit of dishwashing liquid. And this is the first step to get it nice and foamy. That's not nice and foamy. I need a bit more. By the way, I don't measure out. This is just, as I said, the first step. So I just take a sponge. I have the dishwashing liquid mixed with water and I just wipe down the leaves under the mic. It's not necessary that you wear a mic, so I wipe down the leaves from the back and from the front. Now, I know there is a heart-shaped leaves method. I know Rachel does it a bit differently with a brush, and I think that's actually a great idea, but I don't have a brush at my disposal at the moment. I should be more gentle. I think I'm gonna move it towards the front. So we have a lot of water spillage and that's fine. Anyways, I know that Rachel has her own method. I haven't tried it out. I would love to try it out. Well, I would actually not like to try it out because that means I have a lot of spider mites. I think it's the only one that has spider mites at the moment. And it's not a very serious infestation. It's just a tiny bit of an infestation. It's a bit of a spider mite infestation. And the reason I, get, I have them is because I haven't been taking care properly. I haven't been taking proper care of this. Calathea, Jopartia, Geopartia. I haven't been taking proper care of it, so that's why we have spider mites. I did let it dry out multiple times, and that's really something that I recommend you not to do with them. Don't let them dry out. Because when you do, they are more prone to spider mites. They will get them. It will be much easier for them to catch them to catch the spider mites, <laughs> to get to the spider mites. I think this towel is not helping me a lot um, because I'm still spilling. I'm getting it soaked. Uh, okay, I don't know if I cleaned this leaf or if it dried, but I'm just gonna do it again. This is why you buy small calatheas because then you have less leaves to clean. And of course they will never grow, right? So this is the first step, right? We're gonna clean it off. And then we are, and sometimes this is just enough to do this. Sometimes it will work if you don't have a very serious infestation of spider mites. 
Just wiping the leaves down with dishwashing liquid will get rid of them because these are not the red spider mites that attacked my Hoyas and that caused devastation. These are just, I said I'm gonna be calm today and zen. Not very zen, right? Oh, I forgot to say, if you have anything to do with your plants, grab your plants and start doing it with me. The plant chores, I mean. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Okay, we just have a few more leaves. I don't clean the new leaves that are still unfurled like this. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, which you never should. But because this is only the first step and I'm going to do one more step after this is done, that's why I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Otherwise, well, I guess they are not very easy to clean. Okay, so these are going to be hard because I'm sitting. As I said, I would usually do this in the bathtub. You know, get in there with your plants. Do we have a full coverage? I think we do. Okay, so this is the full coverage. I'm just gonna remove this. It's just... Nice. Okay, we're gonna let her sit like this. Wrap it in a towel. You don't need to. But I just want to clean my desk. I'm gonna leave it as is. Let it dry. If it's not dry, then we'll take it into the shower. And then we will do the second step, and the second step is spraying it. And I will tell you with what in a moment. On to the plant chore number two. I have no idea if you can see me, but you can see that we have here a um, variegated monstera. This should be a small-leafed uh, monstera deliciosa. I think that they decided that Vorzigiana is not a thing. So I have one here. This plant was taller. I took multiple cuttings for trading from this plant. And I always, when I got my three variegated monsteras, this one was always supposed to go for some trades or propagations. And I haven't gotten around to doing it because to be honest, I, I felt a bit sad about chopping it, but some of these parts had a lot of white, so I had to trim them back. Now, it's partially unpotted, so that is why it is in this pink container. There's soil around because I just traded a cutting of this plant for another one, and one of the aerial roots actually rooted into the soil. What I wanted to do is chop it up. The reason it has all sorts of funky growth in it, I want to try a cutting in semi-hydro. I already have a cutting of Monstera Deliciosa that's doing really well in semi-hydro, and that one I actually purchased before the, these three monsteras. I purchased three cuttings. One I gave away and two I rooted in semi-hydro and they're growing and actually I'm gonna uh, sell them because, well, first of all, I paid for them, so uh, I don't need them anymore and because I have these. So I rooted those and I'm gonna sell them, uh, but for this one, I want, to, I want to leave one cutting in semi-hydro for myself as well so we can compare and see how it does in semi-hydro, will it do any differently than it does in soil and so on. I'm going to grab my scissors and my shears and my alcohol, not my drinking alcohol, this is my alcohol, 70% alcohol, so I can clean my cutting tools. I have no idea how I'm going to cut it. I just do know that I want to cut it and I need to cut it. And also, I think I'm gonna leave the base pretty much with no leaves. Uh, and I'm gonna leave the base in soil. So we're gonna just put back the soil that was in the pot. I would usually set these on fire as well. I just, you know, spill some alcohol on them and set them on fire, but I'm not gonna play with fire today. You know, one of the reasons that I'm cutting, as you can see, it's difficult to stake. I really want them to grow upwards and I have some leaves in the back and it's all kind of funky. So I'm going to release it first so I can assess the situation. I could potentially pot it today already and I will show you why, but I'm out of LECA and I cannot order any LECA until next week. And because I started unpotting this, I really need to do something. I need to finish it. 
It can't stand like this. Well, who tied you like that? Let's just see. I have... So this is the first vine. Okay, I have some growth here. I don't think you can see. I have to release the second one to show you. And the second one is actually activating. The tip is, has started to grow, so that's great. And I don't think I'm gonna keep all of it. I'm just gonna keep some of it. Or maybe I will keep, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I had to cut it back because it started to produce a lot of white. There is a lot of woody stuff here. So I think I'm gonna cut it above that. Also, we have some roots. This is one of the aerial roots that went into the reservoir uh, because it was in a DIY self-watering pot. So this could actually probably go in LECA. The issue is, the biggest issue are the roots. So I think I'm just gonna take it out of the pot. Oh my dear God, this is already a mess because I will need to freeze some aerial roots. So we want to take this entire section with us. I don't know. Oh, what the heck. I think I'm going to make the first cut here. This has been cut several times. So it already has some, some parts that rooted. Oh, that's going to be a fun to untangle. This is ironic. I mean, I don't think it's going to be fun to untangle. Okay. Let's just do the une ine un inevitable. Where's my coffee? <gasps> my coffee. Sip of coffee for courage. I'm actually not afraid. I'm just mostly worried about these aerial roots. They seem to go in all sorts of different directions where I don't want them to go. And I want to see this one is the one. Okay, so let's see. One of these roots, this one, the bottom one that you probably cannot see. So this one that went into water, it traces back to here. So I'm gonna cut below that. Pray to God everything is fine. Okay. If you listen very carefully, you can hear millions of people screaming that I cut this Monstera. I'm just joking. That was a friend's reference, by the way. That part is done. That's the easy part, right? The difficult part is freeing this from the mess that are the roots. Or maybe it will not be so difficult. You're delusional. Okay, it will be difficult. Never mind. It will be difficult. Ah! I'm just gonna say don't ever trust me if, I'm, if I say something is going to be relaxing. Where does this root go? Oh, come on. I'm not struggling. I'm just massaging the root ball. Um, okay, so this is the situation. We have this, but this root, I think this is our root that is giving us so much issue. He is just somewhere. Okay, here, this is the part of it. Or is that all of it? Did I manage to free it? Oh, did I manage to free it? No, I did not manage to free it because that root goes here as well. Okay. Oh, now I think I managed to free it. Yay, we managed. Maybe. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Where did you go now? Oh, you were the one. Okay. Okay. Let's pretend that was easy to do. I totally didn't make a mess on my desk. Okay, this is cutting number one. 
with a bunch of aerial roots. Let's check her out. Do I like it? Okay, I kind of like it. I think we can... So, okay, the, the question is, will I be able to pot this? And you can kind of see that I maybe won't. I think, I think this leaf is going to cause us grief. We can kind of place this on top of the pot. Let's, I'm not gonna pot it now, but let's just imagine how this will look like in the pot, like this. Okay, maybe I will be able to pot it. The stem will not be potted in Lekka, but the rest of the plant will. Okay. Um, so my original idea until I get Lekka was to put the roots in water. And that's a fine idea, you know, in some distilled water with some algamic. That's a great idea. It's a perfect idea. <laughs> my idea has a flaw. Because I wasn't expecting to get so many roots. I was really expecting a bit of this. So... <laughs> I'm... I'm just going, going to show you. I... <laughs> this is... <laughs> this was the plan. Anything wrong with that plan? <laughs> So some of these are aerial roots, they don't need to go, but this like, this needs to go into the water because this was, is, was in moist environment. So this needs to go into the jar. And these should go into, okay, they're not gonna fit into. I'm going to find something, okay? I'm going to go and locate something and I might be able to put all the roots in something. I don't know what. We'll see. I have like five liters of distilled water and I would love it if I didn't spend all of it on this Monstera. Um, okay, let's clean the scissors again. With the situation number two, I'm going to cut it. I guess here. This is even worse. Shocking. I'm just gonna say these had a much smaller root system when I got them also. Um, they were in tiny pot. I don't know how these roots, these roots grew so much. Like I repotted this in May or June. I don't, I don't remember when I got them, but the roots were definitely not this big. So thank you for, I'm just, I have to put this down because I have to massage the roots. We freed one more root. This is cutting number two. And I think I'm, I will probably split because they're going in different directions. And the reason, by the way, it looks like this is because it was grown as a hanging plant. I think I'm gonna split this into two cuttings. What do you think? I should do this live. And then I will have this cutting and then this bottom cutting. Yeah. Okay, that's not so bad. This is one cutting, and then this is the other. And then I'll probably take this leaf off at some point when it dies. Uh, why have you grown in a way which I don't appreciate? And now we are left with stumps, with the base, and I'm going to put all the roots back. I'm gonna cut one more time. I'm going to try to propagate these as wet sticks, whatever, because I want the base to kind of have a normalish look. So, oh, did I break a leaf? I did. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm going to tie it all together. So hopefully now I can make this grow upwards. It's time to pot it back. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to water this. I'm going to wash the cuttings and try to find a way in where I can place them. And I will show that to you. I think it's going to be this container, this cover pot. I will be back soon. Okay, this is one cutting. I did take it to the bathtub to give it a quick wash so I can clean the roots a bit. Most of them are aerial roots, but there are a couple of roots that are from the potting mix. 
And I think it will go eventually in this pot. I will try to kind of pot it like this, I think maybe a bit towards the front so I can have space in the back for the pole, for the stake. I will try to give it a PVC pipe uh, to climb onto because obviously for moss pole will not work. Maybe those poles coca coir with plastic bottoms, they might work. And unfortunately, I do think I will have to use this pot. I know it looks huge now, but I mean, the roots are there and I do want to put all the aerial roots in there. But for now, I'm going to put it in, in the back a bit because I'm going to give it some water and I'm going to place one more cutting in there. And I have three cuttings, as you know, I'm going to try to put this one in a jar. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Can we pretend this fits? This will have to do. I did try to wash away all the dirt. There is some dirt left. I do, I do hope it doesn't contaminate the water. You know what? I'm gonna find a separate something. And I'm not gonna show you that on camera because I'm gonna show you these two, what I plan to do so you can just imagine, use imagination, because I'm going to do the same with this one. I don't want to contaminate the cuttings because I think for the most part, these roots are cleaner, cleaner of dirt and yeah. What I plan to do is use distilled water. I have, I have five liters of distilled water and I'm just gonna pour a bit of it. I'm not gonna put all of it because I might do a bit more chopping, okay? So I'm gonna put a bit of it in the pot. Hopefully not spill it. That's the distilled water that goes in there. I have a gamut. So I'm gonna do a drop of organic in there. Uh, it's very good at helping the roots recover. Not recover necessarily because there's nothing to recover from, but um, it helps with the vitality of the plant. Okay, I don't know what it is. It's magical, okay? It is magical. I just want to mix in the organic a bit. That one is done. Oh wow, it's heavier than I imagined. I'm gonna show you, you will be able to see in this one how I do it. This is how I root Hoyas, by the way. Yeah, I think that's about enough. I mean, you could probably go with a bit more. I usually, by the way, do this with a syringe. Just a drop will do, or two drops. I actually think I did put a bit too much in the big one. And mix it in there. Perfect. Okay, th those were the Monsteras. We will come back to Monsteras maybe in a week. I do need to order Leka and to decide how I will pot them, what I will use for a steak. And will I pot two in one pot or one in one? We will see. We will think about it. Okay, I realized my microphone wasn't recording. So basically what I did is I put some distilled water in there. You don't have to put distilled water in the bottle. You can just use regular tap water. That's what I usually use. I know some people say that you shouldn't spray Calatheas with regular tap water. I do it, they're mostly fine. So, but I use distilled water because I'm too lazy to get up again. So I put about 500 milliliters of distilled water in here and I'm going to put paraffin oil. This is just a regular paraffin oil. You can get it at a drugstore. And um, the ratio is 1.8% paraffin oil. So if we have 500 milliliters of water, that will be around nine milliliters of paraffin oil for 500 milliliters of the distilled water. Because I lost my syringe, and this is just the story of how I lost my syringe. I will use the measuring spoon. This is one teaspoon and I want, I, I think one teaspoon is close to five milliliters. So I'm gonna put one and a bit more. Sometimes I put less, so I will this time put one and a half. And then I just put uh, the dishwashing liquid. Oh, about that much, a bit more. Okay, and shake, agitate. Paraffin oil, oil is mineral oil and it should evaporate quickly. It's actually used in some of the insecticides. 
uh, paraffin oil or no, they say mineral oil. When you spray, you should agitate it a bit more. So I make sure to spray on both sides of the leaf very generously. You want a, a mister with fine mist, as fine as you can. So it doesn't, it's not bad if you go from a distance and spray it like this. I'm just gonna warn you, I go a bit crazy. I probably shouldn't spray this in my room because of the, I'm gonna spray on the walls. I'm gonna spray on my furniture. Probably gonna have oil stains on the floor too. Let's shake it a bit. Make sure to leave no leaf uncovered. I don't think this is a good thing for my mic. Okay, I think we covered almost all the leaves. I'm just checking to see if we did. Well, everything is soaking wet. I'm almost out of the spraying. I, I just used half a liter, liter of water on one plant. That's what I do. I overdo it. But it's drenched in this. I think we will see no more spider mites on this one for, for a moment. They will come back. They always do. But this is a treatment I like to repeat. And it works quite well for spider mites. For red spider mites, not so much. Uh, they are more resilient. But uh, for these more regular ones, I'm not sure. I think they're a bit yellowish. They probably have a, sp a special name. Um, it works well for them. It doesn't work well on thrips, unless you have very few of them. If you have a, a very severe infestation, it will not work that well. You might need to use something else. That's it. I think we're gonna chop a bit more. This is the last plant, I think, for today that I wanna chop up. It's a philodendron subhustatum. And if you remember, when I got it, it had three growth points. They started to rot from the top down. The top was somehow damaged. And this plant didn't really thrive in my conditions. It's still not thriving. And you can just see it looks eh. I want to try to propagate it. It has this new growth point, so I'm gonna cut it here. And I'm gonna cut into three, I think, cuttings. And I'm gonna leave one down below. It is well rooted in semi-hydro, and the roots are fine, but I'm just going to try this propagation, and I want to try to propagate it too, so I can have some cuttings for trade, since this doesn't look, this isn't the plant that I want. Also, it will be nice, because then I will start again with the smaller plant. I might keep one cutting for myself, and then the rest I think I will trade. This one has a broken leaf, so that might be a challenge. We will see about that. It's currently holding on to its dear life. But before we start with that, I had an idea. A lot of people ask me all the time, uh, how did I start collecting plants? And usually I say I started around 2007 or 8, when I was in the seventh, sixth or seventh grade of elementary school. And actually I didn't start to collect plants, I just repossessed. <laughs> a plant that already belonged to my mom and dad, usually my, my dad because my mom isn't really into plants. But I just wanted to go back into the past and see how my plant addiction might have developed and how it wasn't my fault, basically. So I have some photos of me as a child. The first one is me with my grandma and you can see that photo and I don't look very happy. I, in a lot of photos, I, I was a grumpy kid. You can already see some plants around. I can see there a Monstera, a Dracaena. I can't make out what the plants are in the window, but already there, I mean, starting it early, come on. You can't put this on me. On the next photo, you can see this is me being fancy with the phone. I think this was just a pretend phone call. I don't think I was having phone calls at this age. Not that I have phone calls at this age either. You can see there is a nice big Dracaena there, but like there is a distance. There's a distance there. I'm like, mm, 
I'm not sure if I'm liking this. Also, there is a creepy doll that, that belonged to my sister. Still belongs to my sister. She loves it, even though she's 18 years older than me. She loves this doll. And I'm terrified each time I see it. I, it's the scariest thing, I swear. Anyways. Oh, there is her tomato film, the plant that never grew because she took poor care of it. And you can see I'm kind of getting a bit more comfortable approaching the plants a bit, still a bit shy, still developing the plant love. Oh dear God, who put that on me? Aside from the fashion choices that surely were not made by me, because fashion. You can see I'm even closer to the plants who want plant even brought a smile to my face. And now we are just mm, getting very comfortable drawing with plants. It's a fine, it's okay, we are, we are getting comfortable. We are not scared anymore. And well, we got a bit too comfortable and I mean, this is a proof that the personality develops very early. Also, there is a dragon sticker on my, on my forehead. My sister made me do it. And when they took me to the kindergarten, actually a psychologist had to call in my dad because they thought that was too rebellious to have a dragon on my forehead. And I was like, I don't know, inciting a revolution amongst the six, five-year-olds, whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Oh, we definitely got too comfortable here. And I can I just say <laughs> the footwear, the golden <laughs> clocks. Uh, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? I'm just gonna Photoshop in a shirt here because they didn't ask me for the permission. No one asked me for the permission. I'm gonna sue the family. I can see a pothos in the back. I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember us having a pothos. I think it's a pothos or epipremnum actually. And I can see a type of a bromeliad acmea or whatever and you can see proud of the plants that that that's an accident that's a mistake that shouldn't be in the file <laughs> i think this is the first time that i got a genius idea and i decided to become one with the plants so that's the smile on the face and here is my first attempt to become one with the plants that's an apricot tree that actually got cut down this year because it was very old Actually, now I see how much it grew. It was very old and very sick, uh, but that's my first attempt to become one with the plants. And this is like my second attempt, like, yes, I'm getting closer. And here, I mean, goal achieved. As you can see, completely not my fault. It's in this case, it is nurture that caused it. We are going to chop this bad boy up. Also, people ask me, how do you keep your plants small? I cut them all the time. I am a bit sad that I'm chopping this, but it's for the best. So the first cut I'm going to make here. I do hope this isn't difficult to propagate. Nice. And if this continued to grow normally, like if it didn't have this tiny growth, I would just keep it. But I'm going to cut it here. And I generally don't take cuttings that are this big, but I'm gonna risk it with this one. And that's the only one that will be propagated differently. I have some moss here. So I'm gonna put some moss in there with some perlite. As you can see, I have limited myself with perlite. We, we, we discovered that's the best. I, I really don't think perlite is necessary, but yeah. I'm just gonna stick the cutting in there and pray for the best. I'm going to cover it like this and tape it. Of course, I forgot the tape, so you'll have to excuse me for a moment. Before I tape it, I'm just gonna spray some water with some nutrients. And now I can just tape it up. Okay, 
So there, there it goes. We will see if that makes it. We are left with three cuttings. So this one is like, eh. The first one will be, let's say here. So that's one. Two and three. So three cuttings from the philodendron subhastatum. These will be water propagated, so I'm just gonna get a glass jar. I didn't think this through, honestly, because I don't know where all these water propagations are gonna go. I'm gonna follow them and if they don't root, which is a possibility, I will then transfer to sphagnum moss, which I don't have, so I will have to get some somehow. I'm just gonna put there. That's enough of the water and just a tiny bit of the algamic. And I'm going to keep, keep you updated about this, about the process of how we're doing one, two, two drops. That's all they need. They don't need a lot. And I did find that it does speed it up. Let's swish, swish, swish. So three cuttings of the subhastatum, and that one is done. I was thinking about chopping some Hoyas, but I think we are risking this video becoming too traumatic for some people, so I'm not gonna do that but I do have like three or four Hoyas that I want to chop and propagate so I can also have for trade. You know, I never have stuff for trading, at least not ready to go. So I'm preparing, I'm preparing this time if someone wants to trade, if some opportunity arises, so I can have some nice rooted cuttings that started to grow. And so I don't have to spend money on plants because I'm sure I'm not gonna buy any. Also, I wanted to give you some Quick plenty updates, and I think maybe we need a dedicated video for this. Uh, my Hoya undulata is doing really well. It's pushing out a new leaf, and I can already see a second growth point. So that is great. It's making it. I was really worried about this one. Well, because of several different factors. My Hoya onicoides is also growing. Unfortunately, my Hoya clemenciorum died the next day after filming that video. I actually realized the stem was rotten. I didn't touch them too much the first day because I was very nervous, but I noticed the next day that the leaf fell off and it was rotten. I actually have some footage of that. My Hoya Cunyacumariana was also rotten from the bottom. It dropped like seven leaves the next morning and they just kept dropping. I have a couple of tiny one leaf cuttings with one node that are, I'm trying to root them, but I think it's a lost cause for that one. You never know, but I definitely think it's a lost cause. So the two of them made it. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, other Hoyas, as you saw in the video, Hoya Heushtkeliana Verigata, that one died in transit. And the other one, Maniporensis, within a couple of days, it was dead. It was, I think, also rotting. So I didn't want to unpot them the first day to check the situation. Had I done that, I would possibly see they're rotting so I could take some cuttings. But at this point, since it died within two days, it really, I don't think anything could have been done. They would have just died anyways because of the stem rot that started to happen. So that's it, only two survived and they're doing well. So I don't think I killed them, the, the other ones. It's just the transit was way too long. 40 days is a long time and sometimes they look okay-ish, but within a couple of days you see that they are actually dying. I have some violets that are in bloom. I never show violets on my channel, but I have a couple of them that are in bloom. I did lose the tags on them because I'm very smart. Uh, I, when I was transplanting them, I thought, you know, I will just take a photo of the tag, leave it on my phone, and one day I will match the photos with the plants. Turns out that didn't work so well because now I don't really know which one is which. Maybe one day I'll be able to uh, discover the, re rediscover their names again, actually. But for now you get to see that some of them are in bloom and they're looking really nice. Actually, I transferred my violets to semi-hydro. Not all of them, but I think eight or something like that 
are transferred to semi-hydro, they're doing extremely well. Some are in Lekka and rocks, and the other ones are in Ceramis. Uh, and I think in both scenarios, they're doing really well. I think those that are in Ceramis are exceptionally well. Uh, they're growing really, really fast because they do enjoy a lot of moisture and they do drink up a lot of water. The rest of them are not transferred and those are the ones that are stra struggling a bit uh, because I'm not really good with watering. Even though they're in self-watering, I'm still not good at topping up that reservoir and the reservoir is very tiny. Those are the plant chores that we had today and a bit of chatting. I'm sure there are more things that I can update you on but something needs to be left for the future, right? I hope you had fun doing some plant chores with me. Let me know down in the comments below what chores did you do today. I will keep you updated on the cuttings, on the cuttings, on the spider mites. Also, thank you for the overwhelming response for the previous video. I saw that a lot of people would love to see a watering video, so that one is coming, hopefully, less than a month. Let me know if you would like me to do these plant chores monthly. And if you do want to see them monthly, I promise I will never do anything off of the camera. I will just keep all the chores for the camera. So you can see me struggle with aerial roots, with cuttings, with who knows what else. Only the future knows. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you can do so in one of the corners. What was it? It will be somewhere here, right? That's where the subscribe button is, because I will be mirrored. I will not, will I be mirrored? Is the image mirrored? In one of these two corners, you will see the subscribe button. When you see it, you will know it will say subscribe. So if, if you're not, you can, you can do that. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a great weekend and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye bye. Bye, bye, bye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big shout out to my $5 patrons, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Kathy L, Kelsey Jager, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Vicky Dingler, and Theresa Goodman. I would also like to thank my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Liz Martinez, Ina Holm, Ivana, and Nikki. And a thank you to my $1 patron, Free Hit Ian Ask. Thank you all so much for your support. I will see you very soon in the next video. Have a wonderful day and yes, do some plant chores. Come on, they're waiting. I'm just kidding. Plant chores can wait. Brad Pitt knows my plants have been waiting forever.